it's Karen from Lion Gate Farm and today I am going to teach you how to needle felt some harvest gnomes ornaments and um, they're pretty fun and they take a little bit longer than normal so join me all right so today we are going to make this gnome moon ornament it's like my Santa moon ornament kit only it's a no moon. I don't have a kit for this yet. Hopefully I'll make one, but I'm gonna teach you how to do it on your own. Okay, so this guy has an acorn and this guy has an acorn um, on the end here. You can see he's got a big nose. He's got some locks. You can use any kind of locks, but we're gonna make a green one like this. And, you know, the devil's in the details. When you finish these, I will show you how to do that. So let's get started, and I'll show you what you need. I'm going to put these around. I don't know how much of those you can see. The first thing you're going to need is a 16-gauge wire, and this one is about... 17 inches, right? So 12 and five. So seven, this is 17 inches long. Okay, you're gonna need it. So 16 gauge wire, 17 inches long. And then um, you'll need a skewer. That's how we build the nose. And then you need core wool. I'm trying this new core wool here. And I'm going to use, and I know I always tell you don't use Merino, but I have these new Merino blends I'm playing with. So we're gonna use some Coriadale. And I think this color is Bodhi. And this is a new color, green blended Coriadale. Then I have two different colors of orange Coriadale. And this is Hollyhock um, Maori Bergschaft from DHG. It's a really good skin color. And then of course, we have some Blue Face Lester Locks. I just washed these. Oh look, piece of my farm. Just wash these. These are about four to six inches. Um, you can use any color, but I did, these just came out of the wash like Saturday. Okay, so that's all you need. So let's start. The first thing you're gonna do is make a ring. You are gonna take your wire and you're gonna bend it. I want you to bend this one up and this one up, and you know, I don't have my pliers sitting here. You can and can hand them to me. They're right behind his computer. Pliers. <laughs> my, my handy dandy helper here. So once you get them, once you bend that wire back, I want you to crimp it there. And you want this kind of tight. We're going to hide it, but this is how you make your ring. Crimp the other side. You know, you don't have to crimp it, but crimping it uh, makes it easier to work. It'll hold your ring tighter. And then twist it around a little bit. Don't worry if this bends. Cool thing about armature wires, you can bend it all over the place. All right, so we got a nice tight crimp there and that you're like, oh, that doesn't look very round. So let's make it round. We're gonna bend this thing every which way before we're done. So we have this nice round ring. Now, if you have um, tacky wrap, I get my tacky wrap from Serafina. I'm gonna tear off some pieces of core wool here. Takes quite a bit of core wool. I think I gathered about two ounces. All right, so we are going to start, start at your join. If you have tacky wrap, you can smear it on or any kind of beeswax. You can smear it on your wire. I'm going to I'm going to do it without it to show you you can do it without it. And we're going to wrap. This is a, a lesson in wrapping. A lot of wrapping. If you make your pieces too long, it'll be harder to wrap. But remember how to wrap. You're going to keep it flat and go around flat and go around. And right now we're working where the join is because we want to firm up that join. Okay. 
had a request for this video, so that's why we're doing it today. Somebody saw my orange one that I had in my live sale, and they wanted to make one, so we're doing it. So you can see I'm getting a little bit beefy here. And as soon as I'm done with this piece, I'm going to secure it and stop for a second here before I go to the next piece. So what makes these cool ornaments, I have one that's already done here, is, is what you're working towards on this wrap is super skinny over here and you're going to gradually get to the fattest part right here. So it's like the, the man in the moon. You could make this into a man in the moon. So you really have to work at this graduation along here. So we're gonna, I strip down a, that the next piece of core wool. I always wrap away from myself. It's, I think most of the time, I always wrap away from myself. So once I get this part secured, I go to the next part. I'm going to go all the way around. Hopefully I, I got enough core wool in my strip. You make sure it's flat. You want this nice and thin. So angle it and smooth. And if it's not smooth, I can show you a little trick to get it smooth. Pull it very, very tight. You'll be unhappy with it if you don't pull it tight. And you want it very thin. Your goal here is just to cover this wire at this point. Just keep your core wool from twisting. We're going to go all the way around. This project's going to take a little bit longer than normal, probably. We had our first rain here in Oregon. It's awesome. Awesome for the pastures. Bad for my barn because there's no straw in there, so I have a big old mess to clean up. <laughs> but it's okay. Rain is good. I say I have a big old mess to clean up. I mean, John has a big old mess to clean up. <laughs> I'm not on barn cleaning duty yet, still. Okay, so you can see I got to where this meets this. So notice it's already graduating and I'm still still wrapping pretty tight I'm, I'm gonna secure this but I was able to get all the way around see this guy's a little lumpy up here but see this came out nice and smooth now if um, if you have a spot that isn't smooth you can kind of work it by twisting it back and forth just a little. You don't want to do a lot. It'll get hairy. It'll get hairy. So now I'm going to work from the middle. Remember, I want this middle part fat. And I just keep adding core wool as I go. So I'm going to go back up to the top. So now you can kind of say, okay, this is the middle on the left. And we know this is the middle on the right. And we want it to slowly build. I'm going back. Now 
And so I had that space there that wasn't even, and I just added a piece in. I'm going back again. And you know, you can even this out once we get to the color part, but you don't want to do that because the smoother you make your core wool for this, It's everybody's, well, we're, we're sitting here thinking about fall. At least I am. I did this fun pumpkin display out front, out front. What is everybody's favorite pumpkin dessert? Do you have a dessert you love out of pumpkin? I found this recipe for pumpkin crisp. It's like pumpkin cheesecake with apple crisp topping, and I'm going to have to make it. It sounds really good. Because John's favorite dessert is pumpkin pie. He can eat a whole pie all by himself. All right, so we're gonna go back around here. I'm drafting this out a little bit to make it thinner and flatter. And that's probably as far as I'm gonna go with the core wall up here on top. Because remember, you always gotta remember, your inner core needs to be thinner, smaller, than how it's going to end up. Because once we add the other color on, it'll get fatter. It'll get fatter again. So I'm just going to keep working this and keep adding. And, and then the final dimensions I want. So let's see if I can help you here. So this is less than a quarter of an inch, this middle part. And, when, and then I start graduating up at the middle and the top of the circle, it's three quarters and three quarters. So you want that the same. And you're gonna build up to almost two inches. It's about two inches. But going this way, yeah, it's about two inches. So think two inches, two inches, three quarters, three quarters. So you want to just keep working your core wool. And you want to get it, it's not super firm, but it's smooth. So you want to get this all smooth. Even this guy's not smooth. So I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep adding core wool until I get to those dimensions. And then I'll come back and show you how to put the color on. Okay, so once you get your, your base done, notice this is nice and smooth. It's not lumpy. If there is any lumps, hopefully we'll work them out with the color. So I'm going to use the darker color here on the, on the base of him. So either way, this one I use the darker color on the top. So it's really up to you. His hat's the darker color. Um, I could do the whole hat the darker color on this guy, too. Let's try that. So, hat's darker. We're going to use the variegated on the bottom, which means the variegated goes on first. So, pull off some of your robing. I am, again, going to draft this out. Drafting, again, remember, means you're going to find the length of your fibers. And when they start to come apart, you can just separate them a little. If you go too far, it'll come all the way apart. This is actually how you prepare yarn or your, this could be spun. Um, this merino could be spun. So I'm just gonna wrap it just like we did the core wool. I'm gonna start here. We're not gonna worry about where its face goes because gnomes, they don't really have a face. They just have a nose. And just like I wrapped I like the stripes in this to go around. You know, you could do different and make them go down. And notice I'm not stabbing a lot yet because I'm wrapping it tight. This is one of those projects where you don't 
sometimes have to do a lot of needle felting. It's a lot of wrapping on the outside color. So I like how these stripes look. So now I'm gonna needle felt a little. Let's just get that adhered a bit. Since I said I'm going to do his hat in the dark color, I'm going to start here and I'm going to work very thinly down to the perceived middle that I have. Then I'm going to go back up. It's a really good thing we didn't shoot a video last week because I did some dyeing and I forgot to put my gloves on and my hands were red and green and orange and they were all kinds of colors. What's better than nail polish is multicolor hands. <laughs> Dye hands. Yeah, you're supposed to wear gloves, but sometimes you just get going and all of a sudden you don't have your gloves on and you're like, whoops. Some really cool blend. I got some really cool pumpkin blending packs. I'm going to get onto the website. So, even with the Coriadale, I'm just wrapping it around, securing it a little bit. I'm hardly felting this stuff at all. You can, but don't waste your energy. Let's save your energy for the hat when we get there. So his hat's going to come down to there. You may have to add a piece in on the wide part because it doesn't like to cover all the way around. Oh, maybe it did. Nope, I missed. Oh, I need a piece there. But again, when I add a piece, I'm going to go this way because I like my little stripes that are happening. Subtle little stripes. So now we can see how this bends around. Don't even worry about that. All right, so now this middle, middle, I need some more of this merino. I'm gonna tear it so I have a thin piece. Now, just like I did on the other side, I'm gonna draft this out. I'm gonna go thin, because I don't want my my wire getting too fat. I like it super skinny. And then I'm gonna go backwards. Or I'm gonna just tear it off and tack it in because this is where the pumpkin that we're gonna do is gonna go. Yes, we're gonna put a pumpkin around that wire. So let's see, where was I at? So we might get a little bit off here on our, stri on our stripe. I'm gonna lay that over and I'm gonna pull this tight and I'm gonna cover that end. That will secure it. This merino came from a company called the Dye House Gallery in Italy. It's pretty cool. They've got some cool stuff. I was like, oh, that looks kind of fun. So I ordered it and it, it's fun so far. I don't think I'd want to cover something totally with this. 
Wrapping is okay. Because it will take a lot of stabbing to get this smooth if it was on a flat surface. Because you all know how I feel about Merino. You can see how it's not smooth right there. Hopefully our beard will cover this up. That's not how I wanted it to end up. Okay, so here we go. So you can spend some time and smooth this out. You can do it now, you can do it later. You can do it once you have everything on. Sometimes I do it you never know when I'm going to do it. So the next thing we're going to put on is his nose. Just like if we're going to take a little piece. This is hollyhock, um, Maori wool. So this stuff felt really good. It comes in bat form and I tear it apart for my quarter ounce balls. I'm wrapping it onto the skewer. This, I'm, I'm making a cone, and it's probably about an inch long, maybe a little bit longer. Let's get fatter at the bottom here. This is the bottom of his nose. I like them to have huge noses, because they're gnomes. Gnomes have big noses, at least mine do. Let's secure this. Now, I always tell you this, and I should say, I should practice what I preach, because I was doing this last night, and I pulled it out before I did this step right here and the whole middle of my nose came out. So always stab the end you're gonna pull the stick out of. So that when you pull the stick out, it all stays in there. All right, so we have part of his nose. Now, this is a nifty little trick. Since we're on armature wire, we can bend that over. My nose is gonna go here And you're just going to stab along the edges to get it kind of secured down into that core wool. It's a little bit awkward because it's this is in the way. Stab up both sides. This is only part of his nose. So now we're going to take some more of this. We're going to make a little ball. I kind of roll it and then fold the ends in. And then I'm gonna put it on either side of his nose. I'm making nostrils. I kind of want these to be the same size. So then you end up with this weird looking shape and we're gonna take just a little piece of our flesh color, lay it over the top and I want you to just tuck it all in. We're gonna tuck it in and voila, we have a nose. Make sure you go up and down the sides of this big old nose. That last piece you add is what really attaches it to your gnome. And then if you're down here, we can make some nostrils. If you want to put pink or red in there, you can. Nobody ever sees it. But like I said, the devil's in the details. The more details that you put into your project, better it will look. Right, 
My nostrils aren't quite symmetrical, but that's okay. All right, so we have his nose on. You can bend that back so you can make sure it's in the middle. Now, normally I would put his beard on and put his hat brim on. So you can see where I'm just wrapped here. And if you move it, you can see the core wool. So I will have to go back and stab this all in. But let's put the pumpkin on first before we have all this stuff in our way. So you have a little piece of orange. And we're going to draft it out. So if you do an acorn, it's hard. We can talk about the acorn. I didn't build the acorn on the wire. I built the acorn on the skewer and then I cut it. I cut a slit in it down the middle and slipped it on there and felted it onto the wire. It's, and I made sure there was a little bit sticking out that I could put this real acorn cap on. It's a little bit hard. I just wanted to show you how to wrap a pumpkin though, if you don't have an acorn cap. So we're just going to keep going around this middle part Draft it out. You want the, the middle to get super fat. The gnomes I've done with pumpkins here sell really, really fast if you're selling for, for holiday craft markets. And then you want to tuck the bottom up in there. And the top down in there. key here is to maintain a round shape and I'm gonna make it look way easier than it is because you need it to graduate up The pumpkin needs to be felted fairly firmly in order to put your lines in. Remember there's a wire in there. You can't break your needles by hitting that wire. I'm gonna add a little bit more. around the middle because I need them fatter. I need it rounder, but I also need it tighter. So I'm pulling it pretty tight. You can hear it's getting tighter, but it's also starting to felt. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to felt this pumpkin and I'm going to felt in, you know how I'm going to felt in the lines all the way around. So subjectively, you want it skinny to fat. Think about it, what a pumpkin looks like when you look at it. Just get those lines going up there. And you can see it's going to take a bit to get it to sculpt. And you're probably thinking, how on earth am I going to get on the inside? Well, remember this, you can twist it. You just twist it around, work the inside, twist it back. It's kind of cool. So I'm going to work on this. It's probably going to take me 10 minutes just for this stinking little pumpkin. But it, the devil's in the details, and that's what makes your project look good. Okay, I've been working on this pumpkin for about 10 minutes. You can see it's getting pretty firm, which is allowing me to put in his lines. You know, it's just kind of boring right there, right? So let's take a little tiny bit of brown. When I say tiny, I mean like one or two fibers. You don't want a thick line. And I'm just gonna put it in the lines of the pumpkin. Just so we have a little bit of contrast there.
see how the brown shows up against the orange. And then we're going to take a little bit here and I just wrap a tiny bit up here around the stem where the stem would be. So you, it depends on how skinny you got, you were able to maintain this wire as to how fat your stem will be. We're going to um, tie a little bow on there afterwards. So I've got extra fiber here. I'm going to work it back in and around. Go up this side. So we have this little pumpkin happening here. Rip just came flying down the stairs, the dog, because he thinks it is time to eat. So it's starting to look like a pumpkin. I will tie a little twine around it probably at the bottom but I also like to put little green locks curly locks coming off the pumpkin I I spend a lot of time on the pumpkin or the acorn the acorn is similar once you split it and put it around this wire you have to reattach it to itself and it takes a bit takes longer than the pumpkin does. All right, so we have a semblance of a pumpkin there. Okay, let's go back over here. I'm gonna move this out of the way for right now. We might need it some more. Oh, we will need the green more. Okay, so now I have these blue face Lester locks. I think I've talked about this before. So when you wash these, you don't always, they don't always come separate. They get clumped up like this because the cut ends felt a little bit in the washing process can't be avoided. So I'm going to grab the non-cut end and I'm going to pull it off of the clump. It just happens. It's not anything that's bad. But if you separate them from this way, you have less fuzzies, believe it or not, than if you pulled them from the top end. I mean, I can probably show you that. So see if we pull it from up here, it gets all fuzzy. We don't want that. We want them to be in these curly locks. So see, I have curly locks. I'm going to pull and get those off. So let's prep a whole bunch here. I'm going to get a little pile going. Yep, a one ounce package of locks will do at least three gnomes, unless you put them on very, very heavy. Um, maybe more if you do them light, you know, lighter. So I have this little group. I've been making this little pile. So we have this little pile going. I'm going to take some. And I don't want them super long. So I am going to lay them with the tip end up, cut end down, and I'm going to find the center. And I'm going to felt that in. And then I'm going to flip these down so that hides that cut end. And gives him this little beard down here. I'm just tucking it in. I'm not super felting it because I want it to look like a beard. All right, so we have that little tiny beard going on. And then he needs some hair. Again, I don't want my hair long, but I still want hair. So I'm finding the center, flipping these down. You know, that's why we don't have to make an eye because the gnome has the locks coming down. And I'm just going to go around where the hat brim is going to go because this is where its hat brim goes. It's going to hide the top of those. If you want your locks longer, leave them longer. It's subjective here. However you want them to look. I want them to come down there. We still have to do a mustache. These ones are a little bit fuzzier. The fuzz also helps the hair stand out from the head just a little bit. And notice I'm mostly felting just up at this top part. So this is loose. So that this looks like a good mustache set. I'm going to leave that alone. So does that one. And so do these. Those look like mustaches to me. Okay, 
can see I'm going all the way around. Even if you think they look too fuzzy, they probably are not. <laughs> Dog doesn't know how to go up and down stairs. Okay, so he's got his hair. See, he's got little hairs all the way around. I kind of tack them so that they're down a little bit. Now let's put his mustache on. So remember, you can move this to the side so that you can work under his nose. All right, same premise. We're gonna, we're gonna put half of the lock, tuck it in up against his nose, move the other half over. Now this you want to felt a little bit. And we'll go the other way. Little mustache, so kind of got to be a hairstylist here. Tuck his mustache under his hair or over his hairs, and you got to kind of bring him up a little bit. Form your mustache. If you're using border lester locks, they make really good mustaches too. So now we have that. He needs a little bit more beard down here. I can see that, especially right here. So as I look at this guy, I'm like, okay, I have this little darker orange. I don't mind orange, you can use red. I'm just gonna tuck a little bit in here so you can kind of see a mouth. Why not orange? I like to make him smile up into his mustache. And then tip this back. See if you like what you've got here. So I don't like these little fuzzies, so I'm gonna tuck them in. Because what I wanna see is the curlies. By tucking in those fuzzies you're actually tacking in your locks okay he is ready for his hat brim and we're gonna make the hat brim out of this Bodhi color so let's put these aside get this color back out now this isn't big enough to go around what you need is a piece of your roving that will go around his head. So about that much. We're gonna spread it out a hair or a fiber, spread it out a fiber. So this is our hat brim. And we're just gonna start poking it. Now, if you wanna make this go a little bit faster, you can take additional fibers and go at a different angle than the fibers are running on this strip. And that will help. You can use your multi-tool if you have one, the, the five to seven needle one, because what we're doing is we're making just a little piece of fabric here. Now remember, when you're doing something like this, 
you can keep going, but you don't want to. You don't want it to become part of your of your surface. So flip it over and work from this side. So we're just going to keep flipping it back and forth and keep working this until we get a nice smooth finish. All right, I gave in and I got my multi-tool, you guys. It'll go way faster this way. It's just way more needles stabbing at one time. There's a little fuzz. It's the wrong color. Let's turn it. You can see, though, I am getting to have this nice flat piece. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to look at this and I'm going to fold it up about a third, maybe yeah, about a third. And I'm going to stab this. So we got a nice edge here. This is the brim of his hat. Let's just fold it up a third. Let's see what this side looks like. So this is the side that's going to be the top. I'm just working that edge. I'm not working this fringe up here. I'm just working the edge. So you see we have this nice smooth edge along here. Next step, we take that smooth edge, find the center. I like the hat to be pretty down, down pretty far over the nose. I attach it here first at the nose and then I'm it's just tacked there and then I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna overlap it and where it overlaps I'm gonna stab it together be gentle over the hair because you kind of want this loose because as you work this top fringe in that will stick out a little bit. Let's go the other way. See how this bubbles up? You're, you, you're gonna need to work this in. It's kind of like sewing. You're gonna make a little pleat and stab it in. Because you want this to be a hat brim. Just kind of manipulate. Remember, felting is about pushing the fibers where you want them to go. I'm gonna go to the single needle. Don't be afraid to stab into his nose or his hair. That will actually help his hat adhere. So you can see you already can't tell where this hat brim attached. But the other thing you want to look at is you want to maintain your cone. See how I've gotten a little off here? So I'm going to poke this a little bit more get that smooth line. Sometimes this part down here will stay softer and this part up here will get harder as you work to get that nice smooth cone shape going.
This is where you can work your fibers all up and down your hat to make them all one with what's underneath. Have a little gnome here but you see he's just kind of boring it's just kind of boring so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take him in the other room with my glue gun and go into my bag of magic tricks because you guys all know i have all these little things and i'm going to tie a twine here i'm going to probably trim some of these little fibers these hairy fibers off i think what i used right there was alpaca so it's all hairy um, i'm going to trim some of those fibers off I'm going to tie a little twine bow here. I'm going to decorate his hat. Maybe put another twine bow here. Um, and we'll see what we got. So I'll be right back and I'll show you how I dressed him all up. Because he's cute this way, but the devil's in the details, like I told you. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I took him in the other room and I put some stuff on him. I've got this burlap ribbon in orange little bell and I tied two pieces of twine together there but to finish the pumpkin I glued a little piece of twine around there for a stem and tied a little bow and added a tiny little bell um only other thing I would do different is I might add some blush on his nose yeah that guy's got a little pink on his nose that's what I would do different so let me show you one last thing let me show you how to put a hanger on him you're gonna take this twine, you need a super large eyed needle. Spit on your twine. <laughs> so it will go through that needle, hopefully. And there, hey, it went through. Imagine that. So now you need to find how you want him to hang. I, see that's too low for me. I kind of grab them. I like them to hang so that the pumpkin is center so it'll probably be about right there you want to go in fairly deep and sometimes it helps if you have pliers and just twist it back and forth till that comes through if you're felted really hard it's going to be hard for that twine to come through and then just bring it up decide how much you want on there tie it believe it or not i normally tie i don't even cut my twine off my thing so I don't waste twine, but we're wasting it today. Now, if you want to be totally fastidious, like I do sometimes, you can take this back down so the knot's there and cover it. I'll show you. Let me grab a piece of fiber. So that way there's no knot. It's a secret knot. You can just cover that knot with a little bit of your fiber. Remember what I said, the devil's in the details. People don't need to know where the knot is. And so then just work this fiber on into your project. Remember this is Coriadale, if you're using Merino, it might be harder to hide the knot. But I try to hide all the knots in all of my projects. That way you don't see them. And then you have a nice clean project all the way around. Thanks for joining me today as we felted our harvest gnomes. I love to see how yours come out. Make sure you post them on the Lion Gate Farm Southern Oregon Felting Group. And then if you're following us, you know, click like. It really helps us out. And, you know, make sure you subscribe. And we'll be back next week with something. We're getting into the holiday spirit, so we might see lots of Santa hats. And then if you need supplies, we put a list down there and just head over to the liongate.org farm store. They should have most everything you need. See you next time.